Atletico Madrid are the third most successful side in Spanish football, only behind neighbours Real Madrid and Barcelona. Nicknamed Los Indios due to their rivalry with Los Blancos, they have a passionate appetite for football. For many years, they were in the shadows of Real Madrid, with the golden age of the club being as far back as between 1947 and 1965. The club has been through a transition period that lasted nearly two decades as they look to get back to challenging at the top of Spanish football. The appointment of former player Diego Simeone seemed to elevate the club, developing an identity of being hard-working grafters. We are going to look to take the club further though. Let's rebuild Atletico Madrid. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM 84 and a big thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on YouTube. So if you've been around the channel for the past couple of weeks, you'll have seen that we have started to do some club rebuilds. I think they're a fantastic little project where you go in, you take the club over and you try and advance them. We are going to give ourselves four seasons in this save to try and improve Atletico Madrid. If you hadn't guessed already by the thumbnail and by the title of the video, that is indeed the team that we are going to go in and try to improve. Now, you may be thinking Atletico really don't need a rebuild. They are doing fine in real life. However, Diego Simeone is there. He has a particular style of football. It's a little bit of rough them up, a little bit of time wasting. He has some star quality players at the club. They don't really play that star quality football though. And hopefully that is what I'm going to look to introduce to the club as we move them forwards. As I said, four seasons to go in, get things done and hopefully win as many trophies as we can. So as always, in this rebuild, the first transfer window is going to be turned off. So even if there is a transfer budget available, we are not going to get to spend that until the January of the first season. But let's not waste any more time. Let's give you a little introduction to Los Indios, rivals of Los Blancos. If we head to the club information page, you can see that they are starting the game off as a four and a half star reputation club. They have been founded in 1903. In terms of their finances, they have a club value of 530 million pounds with a bank balance of 10.7. So that could be interesting. Their media prediction is to start at the start of the save is third. And then when we look at their facilities, they have a four star training facility, a four star youth facility, three star junior coaching and a three and a half star youth recruitment which I think those last two are a little bit harsh because Atletico do have a reputation of bringing players through their own system uh, in recent years they have gone out and spent big money on foreign purchases or purchases from within La Liga but they do bring their own players through um, so maybe that's a little bit harsh but still that is what we are going to be working with at the start and obviously if you were to take this challenge on that's what you would start the game with too so looking at their key players then uh, Koke is club captain, 29-year-old Spanish midfielder in the centre, been capped 56 times. He's uh, developing himself into being a bit of a club legend. Uh, again, as I said, one of those players, homegrown players that has come through at the club. Uh, Jan Oblak is their vice captain, 8 to 28, a Slovenian goalkeeper, is he? Slovenian goalkeeper, yes, he is. 37 caps for him. Uh, there. Key player is Jan Oblak as well. I wasn't aware of that until I've just come across that. So um, they have quite a strong starting base of goalkeepers. Jan Oblak is the key player. And then their top prospect is Alejandro Iturbe, a 17-year-old Spanish goalkeeper too. So he might have to wait a little while to get in ahead of Oblak unless things go wrong with uh, Oblak at the start of the game. But Iturbe is the one who they think they are going to be relying on in the future. If we have a little look at the trophies won then and see what we are looking to emulate and hopefully go further than. Uh, they have won the league 11 times, the last time coming in 2021. So they are current champions in La Liga, which was why I did say they may not need a rebuild. However, we are looking more at philosophy around this save. So we are going to be re rebuilding them anyway. Uh, so... Two title wins, 2014-2021, and before that, 40-41, 50-51, 66-70, 73-77, and 19-96. Uh, they have won a European Cup Winners' Cup in 1962, 
They have won the Europa League or UEFA uh, Cup as it was in 2010, 2012 and 2018. They have won the UEFA Super Cup three times, 2010, 2012, 2018. Um, they have won the Intercontinental Cup once, 1974. They've won the Copa del Rey. Uh, was that 10 times? Did it say 10 times indeed? 60, 61, 65, 72, 76, 85, 91, 92, 96 and 2013. They have won the Liga Smart Bank one time in 2002. I think that is the second division, is it? And they have won the Supercopa de España twice the last time in 2014. So a club with a very proud history of winning trophies. As you can see, they started off their history in terms of this game, 2000, down in the second division. They then got themselves promoted back into La Liga, where they have been ever since, gradually climbing their way up to first place and then hovering around the top three. So the aim of the game, obviously, is not to drop out of the top three. So let's have a little look at the club finances, see what we are working with. As I said, that £10.7 million is in the bank only 810,000 will be available to us once we can start spending the money. They are currently overspent as well by just £4,000 on the wage budget. So probably going to move that £810,000 straight into the wage budget to compensate for that. Uh, it's not a lot to build off, but then again, by the time we come out of January, we may have to ship a few players out and then we will generate some money and hopefully we're going to start the rebuild process from that point. In terms of a club vision then, what are they looking to do? So the club culture in the club vision, they want to make the most of set pieces, play defensively solid football, that is the Simeone way, uh, play high tempo pressing football. I'm not too sure Simeone does that. Maybe the front three that he has, Suarez and Griezmann and those kinds of players, maybe that's uh, what he would try and do. We're not going to try and do that overly. But it's there, it's an objective, so hopefully, uh, if they're not 100% sure what we're doing, we might fit into that, we might not. Uh, they want to play direct football, which is a little bit strange. I'm not sure how those three things go together. I mean, defensively solid, but then just hoof the ball straight up the pitch, it seems. So I'm not 100% sure how we're going to fit into that, but we will work with those three things. For the five-year plan, they want to sign young players to develop for profit, so obviously go out and buy as many wonder kids as we can get our hands on, develop them, sell them on, or maybe keep them at the club if we want to get the best out of them and then sell them on for a profit further on down the line. Work within the wage budget, we are currently not doing that, so that's what I said, the 810000 will probably go straight into that to bring us back. And then in terms of the things that they want to achieve at the end of the current season, they want the Copa del Rey reach the final at a minimum uh, challenge for La Liga in terms of the Spanish top division. Uh, Super Cup was not important to them. Champions League want to reach the quarter finals and then they want to work towards becoming self-sustainable. Uh, pushing forwards across the rest of the five years then, they want to maintain the La Liga title challenge and they want to work towards becoming self-sustainable. Uh, and then by 25-26, they want to actually become self-sustainable. So that could be a bit of an issue, but I think we are fine going forward so let, last thing to show you before we jump into season one is the assistant report as we always do so again playing this 4-3-3 from 4-5-1 however you want to view it and it, the assistant is currently saying our best 11 is Oblak, Hermoso, Savic, Jimenez, Vaselko, Lorente, Herrera, Koke, Carrasco, Griezmann and Suarez up top so hopefully we could play high press with the three up the top three in the middle should be sound and the four at the back hopefully will hold us in good stead going forward. So that is pretty much a rundown of Atletico Madrid at the start of the game. We are going to jump to the end of season one. See if we can get to January and generate some money, generate some signings. See what we can do with what we are given. This one I think is going to be an exciting one. So let's jump to the end of the first season and show you how we get on as we rebuild Atletico Madrid. Here we go then, the date is now the 1st of June 2022. We have reached the end of our first full season in charge of Atletico Madrid. I said at the start we were going to have to generate some money to try and buy some players. 
So let's, as always, run through the transfers first before showing you the season results and breaking down what has happened in season one. Starting on the right-hand side then, if you remember, the transfer window was only activating from the January transfer window. So no signings in or out until that point. And then we became pretty busy in the market. So the first player to go out was Stefan Savic. He went to good old trusty Newcastle for £21 million. Jeffrey Kondogbia followed him out the door to go to Liverpool for 16.75. Mateus Cunha went to Leeds for 14.5 million pounds. Uh, Angel Correa went to Man City for 35.5. Uh, Mario Hermoso went to Man United for 32.5 million, and Ray Nildo went to Ren for 1.9 million pounds. So that meant that we were able to generate quite a bit of money. Uh, some of those players were featured on the assistant report as players who were in our best 11 at the start of the game. So obviously we need to replace those. And then we started spending the money straight away. Again, as I said, on the left-hand side, only started spending the money in the January transfer window. So the first player we went and signed was Karim Adeyemi. Kid needs no introduction, just signed for Borussia Dortmund in real life. Obviously, he's going to be a world star once he gets going. Uh, on the game, he starts off decent pace, acceleration, finishing, first touch, dribbling, can play off the wings, can play up top. A sound purchase for my first. Uh, the next player was Gianluca Scamacca. Again, a player in real life who has started making a few noises. He looked like he was going to be coming to the Premier League. There was a few bids turned down, I think, from Arsenal. In-game, sent the scouts to look at him. They said he was a decent enough signing, so we went out and added him to the list. We then went and bought Kamil Piatowski, another player from a Red Bull team. So we're not going to become Red Bull Atletico Madrid, I promise. But we needed a right back. He comes in, he can play as a right back, a right winger, a centre back. I think he's going to be a bit of a utility player. Also at £9 million, I think that one is going to turn into a bit of a bargain. Fabricio Diaz was the next one at £2.7 million. Pounds. He's an absolute steal. 19 years old, he's going to develop a lot. The money that you pay at £2.7 million, pounds, if you're not managing in England, just go and buy him, try him out, see what you think. I think he's going to be an absolute solid player for the team and another one that we bought in on the cheap at £2.7 million. Pounds. The next player from Cincinnati, even though he's there wearing, I think, a Sao Paulo kit. Uh, he's Brenner. He's a player, if you saw any of my FM21 videos, really like this guy. I think he's uh, got, got something about him. Maybe not as good in this game as he was in 21, but I suppose we're going to find that out. Um, yeah, pace is good. Acceleration, finishing, dribbling, first touch. Just out and out striker. Uh, that's pretty much all that we needed. So the last player to come in then was a Benoit Badiashili. He is a big centre back who is young, 21, comes from Monaco. Absolute steal of a purchase, really. Fits in there, as you can see on the star ratings against him and F and Felipe. He's better than Lorente and Piotowski. Uh, he's another wonder kid again. This is the type of player that they wanted on the five year plan. Go in, buy him young, get the best out of them, and then ship them on. So whether we do ship him on or not, it's going to be another question. But uh, we have certainly gone in for the younger players, going to try and develop them. And then whether we move them on or not is irrelevant because hopefully they're going to help us to win things now. So in total, the club had spent 141 million. We recouped 133, but don't forget a lot of that was in the July transfer window, uh, July through to August. So a lot of the money spent i mean they bought rodrigo de paul there for 30 million pounds in july um yeah a lot of it wasn't spent by us so of the money we did spend was it money well worth spent with the competitions tab you can see in our first season we have finished third it's not what we wanted and we are quite a way off of noisy neighbors real madrid obviously coming into the game they were champions atletico at the start it's a building process, though, a big change, a big overhaul in the way they play football. We have finished in the Champions League position, which is good enough. We are going to be attracting the right kind of player to make the club step forward, but maybe not the best of starts in terms of the league position, but it's something we can build on. Um, 
Champions League, we were knocked out in the first knockout round by Salzburg, which is a little, well, more than a little disappointing. It was really disappointing because I thought we had a really good chance of going on a good Champions League run. Got knocked out there. And then we won the Copa del Rey, so it's a first piece of silverware in the first season. And we won the Super Copa de España, which the board completely were not bothered about. If we have a look at the Liga Santander then, you can see Real Madrid are the winners there on 101 points. They only lost one game, but our win-loss record was play 38, won 25, drawn 9, lost 4. A goal difference 64 points of 84. So looking at that, draws are the big thing. Couldn't hold on to leads or if we were saving a point, basically, it's too many draws there. We need to convert some of that nine into wins. Looking across the stats, though, Mr. Luis Suarez was the top goal scorer in La Liga with 21 goals. He was also the top average rated player at 7.40. He um, doesn't feature over there. It's uh, Koke on the assists for 13, so he finished joint second in the league for that. So some good stats coming out of the players here. Renan Lodi, he got himself 12 yellow cards, so a bit naughty on his discipline. If we have a look then at our own team, you can see Suarez was the top goal scorer with 30 across the season. He was the highest average rating at 7.40 as well. Koke got the most assists with 18. Jose Menes had the best pass completion. Most player of the match awards went to Luis Suarez. Uh, most yellow cards to Renan Lodi. And Marcos Lorente got himself two red cards, so not good for him um if we go back to the competitions tab just slightly and if we have a look at the copa del rey we beat barcelona in the final of that 3-1 uh luis suarez was the joint top goal scorer out with depay and griezmann in that uh griezmann as you know is a barcelona player he's currently on loan there is an option to buy the player i don't think we're going to be taking that option up going forwards uh, if we have a little look at the finances, that might be able to clear up probably why. Uh, bank balance at the end of the first season, before the money comes in for the TV deals, the Champions League, that kind of thing. Uh, £18 million in the bank, 11.7 as a transfer budget and £2.9 million pounds as a wage budget. We are about to trim some of that off. So going forwards into the next transfer window, we are going to have some money to spend, but it's not going to be well beating. We are going to have to build this club off of what we currently have. Uh, Club Vision, disappointed about making the most of set pieces, which must have been added on because I don't remember that being up there all along. Or maybe it was, not 100% sure, but they're disappointed with that, so that's something to work on in the future. Play defensively solid football, they are fine with that. Play high tempo pressing football, fine with that. Play direct football, they're satisfied, so we're hitting enough long balls to keep the board on side. Sign players under the age of 23 for the first team, they're reserving judgment, even though I think we have been doing that. And then the five-year plan, sign young players develop for a profit, they're reserving judgment. Work within the wage budget, we are now in line with the wage budget, so they're on course with that. Minimum four-year contracts for first team players, not judging at the moment. Um, going forwards then, have they become any more ambitious? Uh, they want a challenge for La Liga next season, reach the court finals of the Champions League as a minimum, and then the contract's up for renewal. They want us to win La Liga, continue to win La Liga, continue to win La Liga, continue to win La Liga. So, it's all in place for success at the club. If we go to the squad and go to the assistant report, let's show you how players are fitting in now. So, you can see Oblak is now the goalkeeper. Lodi, Abadi Ashili. Jimenez and Vasalco at the back four. Lorente, DePaul and Koke are the midfield three. Carrasco, Griezmann. Joe Felix has replaced Luis Suarez up top, even though Suarez scored as many goals as he did. Uh, I've got a feeling there is a contract dispute coming with Suarez because he's on massive money. And I don't think we can afford to pay it, so there might be something going on there. But that is the first season in the books. A third place in the La Liga is something to build upon. That Champions League is a little bit disappointing, but the Copa del Rey in the bag, it's something to look forward to going into season two. Not a lot of money to spend, but can we push them forwards? Let's continue to rebuild Atletico Madrid. We have now pushed to the end of season two then. Can we go any better than third in La Liga and any better than the first knockout round of the Champions League? Once again, Big money spent by the club, but big money moves both in and out. So let's 
show you the first uh, players that have left the club. Uh, we started pretty much as soon as the season finished, as soon as the 9th of June came and the window opened, we started making deals. Renan Lodi was the first one to go out for £42 million, quickly followed by Alvaro Morata, which I think was a deal that was in place anyway from his loan deal. But that was £72 million made pretty much straight away. Uh, Ivo Gerbic went to uh, Allo SC, which I think is Lille, for £6 million. And then, unfortunately, Luis Suarez ended up leaving the club. Couldn't agree terms on a new deal, even though he accepted a deal there with Chelsea for 135000 I think he was asking for around £300,000 a week at Atletico Madrid. We were never going to pay that amount, especially with trying to rebuild the team. So, off the wage books, got uh, obviously got players in. But it's uh, freed up that wage budget that we could go and bring the players in with. Uh, quite a few free transfers, players from the youth teams and etc. leaving the club. Uh, the next big-ish uh, sale was Francisco to Seville under 19s before Daniel Vass went to Zenit for £2.5 million. So we regenerated enough money to go out and have a bit of a spending spree. So the last transfer... At the end of the January transfer window was Badi Ashili. We then started on the 1st of July. Uh, we signed Andrea Cambiasso for £8.25 million. Quick, uh, dynamic winger who can play on both sides as a wing back or as a left winger or right winger. We signed Daniel Rugiani. Or Rugani. He is a solid Italian centre back. Tackling is good, stamina is good, jumping is good, uh, age is good at 28. He's going to fit in quite nicely at the back next to uh, Badi Shili. We then signed Isaac Johannesson. He's got another name, I think. Isaac Johannesson. Berg, I think, is the middle name. Isaac Berg Johannesson. Uh, Icelandic, 20 years old, can play in a number of positions through the middle, wide left, left back. He's got it all going on and he come in uh, basically to develop for the future. He's another one of those age 20. We can bring him on. Uh, we can, if need be, sell him on further down the line. But I think he's a sound investment at what we paid for him. Uh, the next player was Marcus Holmgren Pedersen. He's a left back or a right back. Versatility is key here. Obviously losing a wing back means that we're going to bring somebody in who could play in those positions, and he's the player that we settled on for those. Uh, Lorenzo Luca was the next big one. Suarez went out, obviously was top goal scorer last season, needed to replace him and get somebody who could score goals. Lorenzo Luca is the man that we are going to bring in and plug in up top. At the moment, he isn't rated highly enough to get first team football all the time, but at the age of 22, he's going to be developed and he will be playing first team football sooner rather than later. We then signed Jens Kajust from Ream, uh, £12 million. This one's an absolute steal because in real life, he's going to be an absolute worldie of a footballer. On the game, again, versatility is the key. He can play in both central midfield slots, can play as a right back, as a right winger, can even be a makeshift left winger or even a makeshift striker. And play as a centre-back too, but he's rather awkward there. Uh, this is a player made absolute perfect sense to go out and buy him. Another one, 23 years old. The money we paid is not important. I think he will be a success at the club. And then the last player we signed before the turn of the window was Vanderson. Uh, another right-back who come in to basically cover. 21 years old, Brazilian. I think he can have a long-term future at the club. So moving then on to the next part of the transfer window, and it continued. So players out again first here. So Nicolas Ibanez went to Boca for 1.2 million. Vitolo went to Galatasaray for 1.9. Yannick Carrasco is the next big one out the door. His contract was running down. He's another one that wanted over £250,000 a week. Milan came in with a £44 million bid. It made perfect sense to take it, which we did. And we went out and we'll spend that money. Uh, Piotrowski left the club, came in, got unhappy. This is another reason why we were signing right backs. £6.25 million, so not a great deal for us. But it got him off the books. Uh, Jose Jimenez went to Porto for £33 million. Not too sure where Porto were getting all this money from. 
because they came back and signed Rodrigo de Paul for 35 million, so that's a total of 68 million pounds and two players from one club. But hey ho, we're not judging, we'll take it. And then we again started to invest this back into our own team. So, uh, Mazbek Sorensen was the first one to come in after that money came in. Uh, defender center, defender left. 24 years old, he was one that we just went out and bought. I think he will plug in to either of those positions quite well. Philip Zinkenekel is a player that we have bought in the past, probably not of the standard of what Atletico really need, but he is a rotation option at 28 years old. We know what he's about, so he can just come in and out the team when we need him, although I don't think that's going to wash with him, but we're going to give it a try. We then signed Conrad De La Fuente. He's an absolute baller. Plays left, wide left, wide right. In real life, he's getting rave reviews as well. Uh, left Barcelona to go to Marseille, and he's doing well in France. In-game, uh, USA International with one cap. I think he can play, like I said, wide left, wide right. can cover a number of positions, and he's a sound purchase. We then signed Mikhail Damsgaard, player who I had on the Sampdoria rebuild. He was a integral part of what Sampdoria were doing. Uh, pace of 14, acceleration of 15. 22 years old, his passing is good, finishing could do with improving, but his dribbling, his first touch, his crossing is all there. Another one that I think once he develops into a role in the team, he will be a brilliant player. We then went out and signed Renato Sanchez for £51 million, just to shore the midfielder once Carrasco had left the club. We needed to go out and sign a central midfielder. He popped up on a scouting report. Obviously, we know the player. He used to play for Swansea. Um... Yeah, we just went out, we spent the money, and I think, again, long-term, 25 years old, one for the future and for the now. We went back then to LOSC and raided them for Zeki Selic, £42.5 million for him. Another one who could play left-back, can play right-back. Big upgrade on what we had at the club already. Tackling 15, pace of 15, acceleration. It was a no-brainer. It was the one that we just needed to get done. We bought him in. And he will slot straight into either left back or right back wherever we need him. And the last player to come in through the doors is a Spanish player, Danny Olmo. If you checked out the um, Red Bull Leipzig series from FM21, you can see how great Danny Olmo is going to be. Even in real life, when he plays for Spain, he has a set role that they just love him in. Um, Centre of their midfield, he can attack, he can break forwards. This is a no-brainer at the age of 25. 29 international caps, 5 goals. Goes in only second to Joe Felix in the central midfield role. So it's a sound purchase. And I think that he will do very well for the club. So it's a lot of money. £199 million spent. 122 recapped. Uh, that's just for after July. The money from before July isn't even added on there. So we have had a massive, massive turnaround. Was it worth the big outlay? With the competitions tab, you can see we have regained the La Liga title. We won it only by four points from Real Madrid. We have a goal difference of 61, but it was a big turnaround. Real Madrid had run off and won the La Liga last season. We have beaten them to the title this season. Uh, Champions League, first knockout round again. This time Manchester City, so not too disappointed because Manchester City obviously are a powerhouse both in this game. And in real life, despite me sat here in a Liverpool shirt, we can admit that. Um, Copa del Rey finished runner-up this time. Who did we finish runner-up to? We finished runner-up to Real Madrid, of course we did. And then the Super Copa, uh, surely we finished runners-up to Real Madrid in that too. We did indeed. So let's have a little look at the La Liga then. Um, in terms of top goal scorers this season, we do not have one on the list. Karim Benzema, they're doing his thing. 32 league goals. But we do have all three positions for average ratings with Selic, Badiashili and Rodrigo de Paul. All three of those. That's quite impressive. Uh, assists, Koke, 14 of those. No play with the match awards. Clean sheets, Jan Black got the most there with 18. And luckily for us, nobody in the yellow cards column this time around. If we go and have a look at our own club though, Karim Adeyemi was our top goal scorer this time. He brought Lorenzo Luca in to score the goals. Karim Adeyemi playing as a makeshift striker. 
obviously he can come off the wings too, but he stepped up and he scored the goals in Suarez's absence. Ben Wabadi Shidi was highest average rating 7.46. Koke, most assists with 19. Felipe, best pass completion. Adimi got most man of the matches. Lorente and Badi Shidi got most yellow cards. And Felipe and Marcos Lorente both getting two red cards. So I think that's Lorente's fourth red card of the save after just two seasons, which is a little bit crazy. If we go and have a look a little bit more in depth then uh, at La Liga in terms of what we did personally, 38 games played, 27 won, five drawn, which is better than nine from last season, but we did lose six games. Uh, goal difference of 61 and points was 86. So a decent overall season. We regained the La Liga title and we are moving the club forward. So let's have a look at the finances. And this is absolutely crazy, uh, mind-boggling stuff. Before all of the TV money, the Champions League money and all that kind of thing comes in, the club are £52 million in the red. So obviously they wanted to become sustainable. That is something that we are struggling to do at this point of the save. But hopefully now we have bought that core players that we bought for the big outlay in this season. We won't need to keep doing that every season going forwards. We have a transfer budget of £3.5 million, which we probably won't use unless we can sell players on. Wage budget is £3.064 million, and we are not spending anywhere near that. We have nearly £200,000 in that gap. Uh, moving forward to the club vision then. So make the most set pieces that are satisfied. Play defensively, solid football, satisfied. Play high tempo, pressing football, please. Play direct football, satisfied. Sign players under the age of 23 for the first team that are delighted because we did that all over. Uh, the five-year plan then is sign young players to develop for profit still. Work within the wage budget. Minimum four-year contracts for the first team players and sell players before buying. So as I said, that money in the red and the fact they're still giving us money means they want us to turn players over before we can go out and make some big signings. By the end of next season, then, they want us to qualify for the UEFA Champions League. So not even win the league now is uh, qualify, uh, reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So that's the big one. We've struggled to do that, really. We have now won the league. We can hopefully push on next season and go further in the Champions League past that dreaded first knockout round. And then building up, they want to challenge for the title, win the title and continue to win the title. So no problems with any of that whatsoever. So then... If we go back to the competitions tab, then we have won La Liga in season two. Again, as I said, first knockout round in the Champions League. Runner up in the Copa del Rey, runner up in the Super Copa de España. So a successful second season. We're now going to kick on go into season three. Can we do even better as we rebuild Atletico Madrid? Here we go, then. We have pushed on to the end of season three. You may be able to tell by looking at that total there, we haven't actually signed too many players. As I said, we were struggling and it was a case of maybe having to move players on before we could bring players in. And we went conservative for season three, knowing that we had a good enough team to win the Liga. However, we did lose a number of key players in the summer as contracts expired and they refused to sign new ones. As I said, that wage budget structure is just so rigid. We needed to stick to it which meant that we lost players like Santiago Arias to Red Bull Leipzig. Thomas Lamar ended up going to Roma on a free transfer. Would have liked to have got some money for these, but uh, it wasn't happening. And then Jan Oblak was the big one. He's a bit of a kick in the balls, if I'm honest, because uh, we tried everything we could to get him to come back. He wouldn't sign the new deal. So we are now down to a goalkeeper who is uh, raw potential in Iturbe. Although the two players that we did sign, the first one is Jakub Stolarczyk. I'm going to go with Stolarczyk. Uh, he's a Polish goalkeeper, I think. Where was he before? So he had been at Leicester. He was then out on loan at Dunfermline and OHL. So not the greatest of signings, but we needed cover at goalkeeper. We were pretty desperate. But then the only player we went out and spent any money on ourselves was Geronimo Rulli. He comes in as a replacement for Jan Oblak, uh, Villarreal goalkeeper. He was on the transfer list. We brought him in as first choice goalkeeper. We are hoping he's going to be able to do a job for us in terms of filling in for Oblak. But it's going to be difficult either way. But then we tried to start balancing the books somewhere. And the players that left them were Brenner, 
one of my favourite players in the game, but couldn't find a place for him in the team. Lorenzo Luca doing a little bit better in the third season meant that his time was pretty restricted. Uh, we sold him on for £9.5 million to Leeds. We then let Manu Sanchez go to Levante for £1.4 million and Marcos Paolo go into Bordeaux for £2.4 million. So, quiet on the transfers front, both players in and players out. As I said, we had that core of the squad that we built last season. So, hopefully, we can continue our good form in the competitions. And when we hit the tab... You can see we are champions once again, 93 points this time, winning the league by 7 points from Barcelona. In terms of the Champions League, even though we haven't had the final yet, we were knocked out in the semi-finals this time. We had a decent run at it. Let's go through all of that then. If we go to the group stages or groups. You can see we got drawn in a group with Borussia Dortmund, Atalanta and Red Star Belgrade. Uh, we come through with 13 points, so qualified quite convincingly. In the first knockout round, we faced off against Inter Milan. We won 6-2 on aggregate there. In the quarterfinals, faced off against Liverpool, winning 8-7 on aggregate. Two absolute crazy games for those. And then the semi-final is where we ended up as we lost to Paris Saint-Germain. We absolutely got tore apart uh, in the home leg. So, yeah, we drew the away leg 1-1 and we got absolutely beaten up 6-1 in the first part of that game. I mean, PSG are in the final, obviously, so no disgrace there. It's an improvement on what we had from the first knockout round from before, so... It's progress. It's complete progress. Uh, Copa del Rey, runners up again. Real Madrid or Barcelona? What do you think? It was Barcelona this time. We lost 5-2 in the final of that. And the Supercopa de España, we lost 5-0 to Real Madrid. So, pretty crazy. Even though we are league champions, we did have some games where we got beaten pretty convincingly too. Um, let's just have a little look then at the league. You can see that in this season we had a win-loss record of play 38, won 29, drawn 6, lost 3, 78 goal difference. So whether it was Ruli or whether it was goal scorers, you can see we have two impressive goal scorers on the list there. Uh, our goal difference is improving and our points is improving too. We have 93 now. Looking at the player stats then, Adeyemi and Luca scoring a combined 43 goals between them. He's very impressive. We're one playing up top, one playing in off of the right wing. So a great partnership there up top. In terms of the average ratings, Koke 7.57 and Badi Shili 7.57. Badi Shili is turning into be an absolute steal at the price we paid for him at the start of the game. Uh, Koke was king of the assists with 20. And then we have nothing else in any of the other categories. If we look at the home page. Karim Adeyemi was our top goal scorer across the season with 36 goals in all comps. Uh, Badia Shili had the highest average rating. Koke most assists with 26. Felipe was the best pass completion. Adeyemi most player of the matches. Felipe most yellow cards. And Holmgren and Pedersen getting two red cards. Lorente for a change not getting any. So that is pretty much that in terms of the competitions. Let's have a little look at the finances. So last season we were £53 million in the red. This season 39 so we're recouping a little bit. We do need to try and get it reeled in though. Although we are progressing in the Champions League, that is going to bring some more money in. But we really, really do need to get the La Liga money and the uh, Champions League money in. Because a £9 million budget for the final season means that we're probably not going to go out and go crazy. Uh, the wage budget is £3.1 million. Pounds. We have current spending of 2.9, committed spending of 2.8. So there's a little bit of money there, but it's not going to be uh, like astronomical amounts. Uh, onto the club vision then. Our job is very secure. Uh, make the most of set pieces, satisfied. Play defensive, sorry, football, disappointed. So even though we scored more goals, we must have conceded more goals because the board are not happy about that. Play high tempo pressing football, they are pleased. Play direct football, satisfied. Signing players under the age of 23, they're still delighted because we have continued to do that. So we are still, for the five-year plan, looking to sign young players to develop for a profit, work within the wage budget, which we are doing at the 
minimum four year contracts for first team players. And then they want us to qualify for the UEFA Champions League through La Liga. Champions League reach is that the knockout stages? Reach the first knockout round at minimum. And then going forward, challenge for La Liga, win La Liga, and continue to win La Liga. So all of that there seems pretty achievable. Um, there are a few things the board are upset about here. Uh, 5-2 Copper Del Rey defeat against Barcelona. The 7-2 loss against PSG on aggregate. And a 1-1 draw with Real Betis. The board cannot get that out of their system. So let's have a look at the squad and the assistant report. Let's show you what the assistant thinks is the best 11. So even though Lorenzo Luca was on the goal scores list, he can't crack this team. But it means that Ruli is in goal. Pedersen, Sorensen, Badishiri, Cambiasso across the back. Lorente, Olmo, Koke in the middle, Damsgaard, Adeyemi and Felix up top. So if there is money to spend, which I strongly doubt because we are in the red, we need to recoup as much money as we can before we spend any money. But if there is any available, uh, maybe wing backs, maybe left wing, there is still room for improvement. We have one more season to try and retain the La Liga title and go and win a Champions League. Can we do it? Can we get that final push and get us over the line in the rebuild to get European success as well as domestic success? Let's push into season four as we continue the Atletico Madrid rebuild. This is it then. Season four has been completed. We are at 1st of June 2025. And you can pretty much disregard everything I just said at the end of season three. Uh, we have again gone out and had some players come in, some players leave. Uh, we did our business pretty quickly at the end of Season 4. You're going to see a name there on the left-hand side of the screen that is familiar. But first, let's cover the players that left then. So we already had some that had gone out. But Karim Adeyemi has left the club £87 million. They came in Liverpool. They hit that um, transfer... What am I looking for? Transfer clause in his contract uh, that came along. Triggered the release clause is what I'm looking for. 84 mil, uh, £87 million. Pounds. We got the full amount of that. So it meant that we had a lot more money in the coffers all of a sudden to go out and try and replace players with. Uh, Felipe then went to Shakhtar. David Munoz went to Alicante. Marcos Dennis went to Ferrol before. Gianluca Scamacca, who just could not get in the team, he went to Ajax. For 19 million pounds. And at this point of the season now. We have signed. The greatest wonder kid of all. Yusufa Makoko. Um, a big deal to bring him in. He actually was listed by Borussia Dortmund. So we went and tested the waters. See if we could just bring him in. Sure enough we brought him in. On 160,000 pounds a week. For the next four years. And he is going to come in. And run defences ragged. I am sure. So we continued the rebuild then because we got a bit more money. Lorenzo Luca ended up leaving the club. Another one. This is my fault. It was stupid when we signed him. I forgot to up the release clause. Tottenham came in £35.5 million. They said uh, thank you very much. Powerless to stop it completely. But it meant that we did get more fun coupons to go out and spend. So the final players that we bought in to replace those was Caligari. He can play as a right back, he can play as a central midfielder. He's um, passing, he's 13, he's tackling, he's 14, pace of 15, acceleration 16. He can pretty much play where he wants. He's built just to play football. We then signed Benjamin Sheshko, held off of trying to sign him for as long as possible. It's just difficult when he's just sat there and he doesn't move clubs and he's this far in. You've just lost your best striker in Lorenzo Luke and you just go out and buy this kid. He is goals, goals, goals. Uh, we signed Hugo Novoya. Um, where did we sign him from? I did just see. Um, we signed him from Red Bull Leipzig for £7.5 million. Pounds. Player to just come in and basically come in off of either wing when he gets game time, uh, which he didn't actually get a lot of. And then the final player that we signed was Arno Martinez. Uh, we bought him in from... My... my, my brain is absolutely frazzled uh from leon 
5.5 million pounds. Another Spaniard just to go in, just to be an option, a centre back. Not going to be troubling for the first team really, but he is a option if we need him. So that is the money that we have spent. 50 million pounds this part, plus the money for Makoko, which I think broke either a club record or a record for a player of his age or there was a record broken there with the £75 million move. But still, even though I said there was not going to be big money spent, there was big money spent. So let's jump across to the competitions tab. Was it worth the big money spent? It was indeed. We have won La Liga again. That is now three in a row. Goal difference of 100. And we've won 31 of 38 games to get 97 points. So season on season, we are still building as we go along. Absolutely fantastic, uh, great com campaign in La Liga. Uh, Champions League, semi-finals again. Noisy neighbours, Real Madrid knocked us out there. Uh, runners up in the Copa del Rey, Real Madrid again. Real Madrid again, 4-3 in extra time. And then the Copa, Super Copa de España, we ended up winning that, beating Valencia 1-0. So let's have a little look at La Liga Santander then. You can see that we had two of the top three goal scorers in the league. In fact, they were both joint. Joe Felix and Yusufa Makoko scoring 50 goals between them. Absolutely fantastic. That is a big bulk of where the 100 goal difference has come from. Uh, looking at the average player ratings, Badi Shili and Joe Felix top the list in that category. Badi Shili with a 7.59. Felix with a 7.46. We have two of the top three assisters in the league as well, with Danny Olmo on 15, Marcos Lorente on 13, and Geronimo Rulli getting 16 clean sheets topped that category there. So if we go to the homepage and show you our own team, you can see Yusufa Makoko was the top goal scorer across the season with 38 goals. Benoit Badi Ashili got 7.55 average rating. Danny Olmo got the most with 21 assists. Badi Ashili best pass completion. Yusuf Makoko got eight player of the match towards. Caligari got the most yellow cards with 20. Koke and Yusuf Makoko both got sent off across the season. So let's have a look at the finances then. You know that across the past couple of seasons, the club has been in dire straits. I could not leave the club looking the way it was at the end of the previous season. So there is now a positive balance in the bank, you can see since June 2024, the club have not dipped down into the red. They have consistently stayed above. And there is £27.7 .7 million in the bank with a £31 million uh, transfer fee, no, transfer budget for somebody to come and inherit. Uh, the wage budget, there is uh, nearly £200,000 in that as a gap as well. So the club is doing well. It is now making money and they want it to be self-sustainable. I think they are well on the path with that. In terms of club vision then, we got a B plus for the final season. We're disappointed still about making the most of the set pieces, but they were pleased with pretty much everything else. They now do not want to sign players over the age of 30, which we weren't doing anyway. Uh, sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. We smashed that because that's exactly what we were doing. Um, work within the wage budget, on course, minimum four-year contracts for first team players. Uh, La Liga qualified for the UEFA Champions League through La Liga. Done that. Champions League reached the quarterfinals at the minimum. Uh, we reached the semi-finals against Real Madrid. So if we were continuing this, hopefully we'll continue that trend of getting further and further as we go along. Um, challenge for the La Liga title, win the La Liga, and continue to win the Liga. So we have built the club now to consistently challenge and win for the La Liga title we have won three of the four seasons La Liga anyway so the club has been pushed forwards from that point of view uh, if we finish off then by looking at the club info page the club is still a four and a half star uh, reputation club still predicted to finish third by the media um, four star training facilities four star youth facilities three star youth coaching three and a half star youth recruitment so we haven't actually developed any of that looking at the players uh, that are at the club you can see now that Koke is the club captain still so as I said building himself into a bit of a legend at the club Saul is the vice captain uh, Joe Felix is the key player and Iturbe at the age of 21 is still the top prospect 
but let's have a look at what we've achieved across the save then. So uh, they won La Liga themselves in 21. They didn't in 22, but 23, 24, 25, we have won La Liga. Uh, in terms of the Copa del Rey, 2022, we also won the Super Cup in 22 and 25. So we have advanced their trophy cabinet. We have come in, we have won trophies. We have won three La Ligas. We have won the Super Copa de España, and we have won the Copa del Rey. So European competition eludes us. I think if we were to continue further on into the save, that is a real possibility, especially now that the club has money in the bank. They have players like Makoko. Um, yeah, I really think they could have gone on. The last thing to show you is the squad and the assistant report then. You can see now that the best 11 is Ruli in goal, Pedersen, Rugani, Badiashili, Cambiasso, Lorente, Saul and Olmo, Felix, Damsgaard and Makoku. So that there is a young team with a few wise heads in the middle of the park in Saul, um, Ruli in goal, Rugani. And the rest of them are younger players that are going to continue to bring the club forward. So at the end of the save, I think this has been another fantastic project. Atletico Madrid are a brilliant club. They've been fantastic uh, to manage. I think it's been a successful rebuild. Three La Liga titles out of four. Shame about the European football, but it's been a fun journey. There we go then, that is the Atletico Madrid rebuild complete. We have gone through four seasons, we have won trophies, we have turned the squad around. We now have left them with a young, vibrant team that is going to go and push the club forward. They have some wise heads still at the club. Koke, Saul, Ruli, those kinds of players are going to drive them forwards. And as I said, if we were to continue the save, I think there would be a lot more success to come with this team. But for this one, I'm going to start to wrap this up. If you haven't checked out the other videos on the channel, please go and do so. There have been some other rebuilds. There's tactics videos. There's Wonder Kids. There's uh, Let's Plays. Everything for or something for everybody on the channel. Uh, also, whilst you're here, if you are watching, you're still listening, and you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. It helps the channel so, so much. I appreciate every single person that's took the time to do it so far. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to wrap it there. A big thank you for watching. Come and join me on another video soon.